Today we're joined by one of the most experienced investors in the market, Jeremy Grantham of Boston's GMO. And the topic is climate change and why investors should be thinking about it. So Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Thank so, you. So Donald Trump, who has called climate change a hoax, is this week expected to sign a new executive order reversing some of his predecessor's measures to combat climate change. Uh, perhaps you could sort of start us off by talking about why you think climate change is something that investors really should be paying attention to. I, I think climate is moving much faster than the scientists will tell you, although they believe it. They're just very cautious these days. And I think, ironically, that the Trump may be doing us a great service um, because he is stimulating the response. And with any luck, uh, the climate people will rally enormously under this threat and will do something about it. The interesting thing from an investor's point of view is because the science is being deliberately obfuscated in the US, which is an important investment area, obviously, um, the consequences are, are being obscured as well. So that the climate is moving much faster than people think. And the responses are going to move much faster. And I think in terms of the speed with which sort of the climate is moving, uh, you, you've got a chart which has a longer scale yeah, than yes, we're used to here. Yeah, 400,000 years. And it shows the carbon uh, dioxide count. And the interesting thing is there's 120 parts between the depths of the ice ages of which we have four mm. and, and the top of the interglacial of which we uh, are in the fourth one. And you see by 1950, it was just about at the normal level of an interglacial when Homo sapiens stepped in armed with fossil fuels and bang, we added another 120. That is the same amount as separates the depth of the ice age from an interglacial. This is a magnificent experiment. It is kind of enough to make one's hair fall out. And um, one of the undeniable truths is that warmer air carries more water vapor with more water vapor, you tend to have more ferocious downpours that er er erode soil, which has critical implications for feeding 11 billion. And it also has uh, flashy headlines as it floods major cities, which we see increasingly. The thing that worried me the most was the unwillingness of climate scientists to state the, 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 the facts as they saw them, they understated. And I have been using the data as a stock market statistician to prove, I believe, that it was accelerating. Surface temperatures were twice uh, what they were in the first half of the 20th century mm. in the second half. Pretty straightforward. No one was making that point until three weeks ago when finally a peer-reviewed, as far as I know, the first peer-reviewed article uh, of its kind came out in, in the uh, proceedings of the National Academy in the US, a, a very dignified journal and they said that the temperature of the ocean was 15% higher than had pe people had thought. And secondly, it was accelerating. And the period between 1950 and 90, uh, it, it's increasing at about three units of heat per year. And that is up to nine units of heat uh, approximately in the last 27 years. So it is accelerating even worse than, than the atmospheric temperature. Why should we care about this now? What, what does this actually translate into sort of tangible things investors should be doing? The market has gotten more and more difficult to extract value from, I think it's fair to say. And what you have to look for are pockets of great inefficiency. And there is nothing more likely to create a pocket of inefficiency than people being deliberately confused. So if you underestimate the science, you're going to underestimate the speed uh, of the response. You're going to underestimate how much progress there has been made in solar, wind, and storage, how much progress there will be made in transferring to electric cars, and the effects that that will have. So great opportunity in cars, batteries, solar, anything you would avoid. What are the, what are the sort of the industries which are going to really suffer because of this? Obviously fossil fuels, you, you have to be careful. The coal industry is more or less finished, but the oil industry uh, may have one last hurrah uh, in timing come back in 20 years, it, it will be obvious, probably in 10 years, it will be obvious to everybody that the age of the uh, gasoline powered vehicle is, is finished. Uh, and, and it will phase out. It won't go that quickly, but it will phase out enough to mean that they're overproducing and the prices will collapse. 
But I think in the next five years, there may be one last hurrah where there's a tightness in oil again. I personally believe there will be. This is just a speculative idea. But the, long, the longer term is pretty clear. Avoid fossil fuels. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that, Jeremy. Pleasure.